Valhall is a strategic board game for two to four players, set at the dawn of the Viking era. You take part as Jarls of a settlement on the barren isles of Fjornheim. Your goal is to gain the favor of the gods by extending your settlements and trying to find other people's fortune overseas. And then take it. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Valhall by Tetrahedron Games. Valhall plays two to four players, it takes about 90 to 120 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. In the game Valhall, you're going to be getting a Viking settlement, and there's going to be a Viking area in which you're going to go out and attempt to attack villages. You're going to be building your own village, gathering coins, gathering steel, gathering wood, and basically upgrading your characters along with boats, because you're need longboats in order to get out there and pillage some villages. There's going to be these crows that are basically going to signify your victory points in the game, and if you can get to the end before anybody else, you'll win, with a couple caveats as to how you can manage to accomplish that last victory point. You'll also be getting, of course, honor, in which you're going to, or glory, in which you're trying to, uh, when you defeat certain things, or sometimes when you die, based on the cards you get, and based on the loot you get as well. And after a certain number of rounds, if you manage to get the most victory points at the end of the game, you will be the winner. And and otherwise, the end game can trigger as well, depending on what happens. Gather your longboats, gather your Vikings, and attempt to become the most glorious race in the game of Valhall. Let's go ahead and take a look down below, and I'll show you what you get. So here we have a two-player game of Valhall already all set up. Before we get into the setup of the game, let me tell you what everything is. Everybody's going to get a player board, which looks like these, and they're going to have nine different spaces in which you're going to be placing certain things, and I'll explain that in a bit. You're also going to get your favor board, where it's going to have your track for favor of the gods, which if you get to the end of this track, you're going to win the game. And then, of course, this is glory, and glory is going to give you favor at a certain point in the game, provided you have a certain type of building to utilize your glory and turn it into favor. There's these die in the game, which you'll be using for fighting, which are the white ones, and then the red ones here will be using for certain things, which may be fighting, and in addition it'll also be depending on who's going to be getting to go to which locations and when, as well as who's going to be drawing event cards. Every player is going to be getting a longboat, and the uh, soldiers here to start the game with one of each. They're going to get three gold coins, three meat, one meat on the first season, which is going to be summer, and then you're going to be getting two of these uh, steel and or I think iron tokens that you'll be utilizing. You put them all in your storage facility, which is in the middle of the board. Set aside each of the decks for the different soldiers and the veterans and the longboats, as well as the lesser loot, the loot, and then the greater loot. This is going to be given to you depending on who uh, and what you're going to be accomplishing in this board over here. Then you're going to be getting the Benevolence of the Gods cards. Shuffle these decks up, as well as the Wrath of the Gods cards, which is not good. You don't want these guys. And of course, event cards. Set aside these tokens, and depending on how many players in the game is going to depend on how many of these tokens, which will grant you favor provided you're able to accomplish them. Some of them will be like, oh, the first player to get a certain amount of longboats, the first person who's able to collect a certain amount of currency. These things will push this track up as you gather them. They can also have you win the game if they haven't been gathered and you are right here. Uh, these are, of course, your extra pieces of meat and steel and whatnot. Your extra t tokens you're going to set aside. And then all the rest of the cards, which is for the three and four player game, you can set aside if you're not using those. You're going to start with the basic towns, four of them, and a two player game. If you're playing a three-player game, you'll include additional uh, tiles, and then in a four-player game, you'll include an additional one as well. So it can fill the whole board up when you're playing an entire game. Uh, based on the number of players, it's also going to determine how many of these specific cards will be coming out, which are going to be the towns and the fortified towns and the cities. So the stronger cards are going to be found in this deck here. And as the game goes on, they'll be flipping over. And depending on how many favor certain people are going to have, will determine what cards are in this deck. These over here, like the blacksmith, the uh, sacrificial area, the warehouse, and the granary, are going to be upgrades, which you'll be utilizing for your board during the build season. And during the build season, everybody's going to start with one of these tokens here, and it'll go all the way around. How the game works is pretty simple. Players are going to roll a die to determine who goes first. In general, there's going to be an event card, but not in the first round. Uh, players are then going to select their uh, boats, as well as their units, and move them to certain areas on this board to fight. And then the next player will go in order until everyone everybody has at least one of these areas and they can choose to not go there if they would like or they don't think they can beat it. 
After that, they'll be rolling dice and collecting loot if they succeed in defeating these towns. And you're going to move on to the building phase. And the building phase is basically going to start with the first round of building, then the second, which is going to be winter, and then finally the last round. And after all that happens, you're going to draw your event card, and you're going to go back into the game, trying to accomplish these towns, defeating them to gather more and more resources. You'll be utilizing your board during the build phase to train more units, to train more boats, gathering better cards, like benevolence cards here, as well as upgrading to a blacksmith, allowing you to upgrade your units to veterans. Over here is going to be the warehouse, uh, which will allow you to gather, ad build additional units, more than one. And uh, of course, you're going to have the seasons and then the granary, which will let you do some other stuff as well. But that's the basic setup of the game, Ball Hall, as well as pretty much everything in the game. So let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you a round of play so you get an idea of what it looks like and how it feels. And then I'll tell you what I think about it. So here we have a two-player game of all hall all set up and ready to go. And I'm just going to go ahead and take you through a round of play so you get an idea of how the game works. The starting player is going to get the starting player token and generally is going to draw an event card. But in this case, they're not going to because it's the first round of play. After that, then it's going to be, during the summertime, the Viking fight in which the first player in going around clockwise is going to go ahead and move their ships and Vikings to any of these four spaces in a two-player game and it could be even more in a three and a four player game and they're going to choose which areas to go to if you look you're going to see that on this card here it tells you uh one die plus one one is the strength and one die is an additional strength that is the health of the viking and then if that health gets reduced this will get flipped over and then it's going to be just one die and one health and of course if that also gets reduced you're going to lose your viking this boat means that you can carry two Vikings per boat, and that could be upgraded Vikings or not. And in this case, you just start with one specific basic Viking or a group of peoples. So we're going to go ahead and choose one of these areas to fight. And if you look at the areas, it's in the top right hand corner is going to say how many die and then the bonus strength as well as the health. And then the bottom right, it's going to tell you what your rewards are for defeating the specific areas. And as you can see, these guys are all pretty weak right now. You have one die plus one, two die plus zero, one die plus one and one die and then the value you're going to be getting out of these guys here well right now we've got a one plus one so it's probably going to be easier for us if we went ahead and fought something a little more simple like this one over here so we'll move our guys over here in which case uh, that symbolizes we're going to be fighting this one and then the next player is going to do the same and this player here will say okay let's go for oh i don't know this one over here so i guess we can put them just like this so you guys can see who's fighting where after that, then you're going to go in order, one, two, three, four, all the way around, uh, defeating these areas if possible. So what's going to happen is the player whose Vikings it is is going to take their die plus their uh, power. And then you can use this enemy's hit point track if you'd like. Like in this case, he's got enemy has two hit points. It's round one. The warrior's strength is one and the uh, warrior's health is two. So if you wanted, you can go ahead and put those up and they'll be more useful as the game progresses. But right now it's pretty easy. I'll roll my die, one plus one, and then the enemy will roll their die. So any other player basically will roll. 3 plus 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 beats 1 by 3, meaning this guy's going to take damage and actually will get flipped. Oh no. I think he might even die too in this case because he took 2 damage and then he's taking 1 more damage. So he'll actually perish, unfortunately. This poor guy here would go away. And if that happens, that is going to be the end of the combat for this specific player. But let's say instead that uh, this was the result. So 3 plus 1 is 4. This is a one, which means a three damage, and it would do three minus two, which would defeat this area here. And I want to show you guys what it looks like to defeat, because losing is pretty simple. You just get nothing. In this case, he's going to then score his loot. So he's going to get one of these uh, little glories here, moving this up on the track. And then he's also going to get one of these loot cards. And this one shows lesser loot. So he'll draw this card here. He'll read it, see what it says. And there's a lot of text on these cards, a lot of flavor. But the idea is at the bottom, it'll tell you this is going to give you four coins. After that, you would take the card and put them back in the deck and shuffle them up and the player who drew the card is going to score whatever uh, whatever bounty that they successfully accomplished. Then it would go to the next player in order which would be this one over here and it's going to be a one die versus a one die plus one so this guy's going to roll a one this guy's going to roll two so that's two minus one which is one so this guy would go down to one health and then we roll again boop three oh and three which is one more takes this guy out here and the same would happen one glory for this team as well as one lesser loot card go ahead and see what that is that's four plus food that's even better i like that one two three and four putting that in here along with one food let me go and grab a food here as well 
after all of the Vikings have fought, then you're going to go ahead and return them all. And remember, you can only have one player's Vikings in each of the areas unless the players go ahead and choose to help each other. And if that, ha if that happens, all the players will gain this specific glory and players can choose to divvy up the loot as they see fit based on the main player, which is always fun to see how that works. But in general, it could be player one and player two and then player one and player two if they wanted to divide their forces up. And it's always going to go back and forth when players choose specific areas. After that is done, you're going to take all of these starting areas here and you're going to go ahead and shuffle them back into the deck. And the deck is going to be constructed based on the rules, but they'll go back into this deck here, shuffle them up, and then you're going to deal out four new ones. These could be really easy or they could be really, really hard. It's just going to be depending on what happens. And if that happens, there might be only certain areas people can fight unless they choose to help fight each fight with each other. So this might be the only easy one to deal with right now. But we're going to move on past that and we're going to go on to the sea Seasons. And we're going to start with the summer over here. And luckily we get one food to begin the summer, which means that we can use this time to build. If we do not have food or coins on these areas here, we will not be able to utilize our, our buildings and our workers. So right now is a good time to build. So in this case, we can go ahead and do whatever we want. There's a lot of options right now that we can go ahead and choose to do. For instance, we can put up buildings by selecting these guys here. We can go ahead and recruit units such as these long boats in this area and the basic soldiers over here in this area, as well as you're able to go ahead and utilize this runestone area, which is going to let you put a coin down to draw one of these Benevolence of the Gods cards. Each of the buildings give you some kind of benefit, and there's three rounds to the building phase, meaning there's three different building phases depending on how much you want to push in, and at the end of every season is going to give you one coin. So even choosing not to build will generate you some currency. So let's go ahead and show, this, show you this guy here. He is going to, first of all, he wants to build another, an, another one of these training ground areas, so he's going to take one of these guys here. And what you do is you flip it over, and then you're going to place it down based on the turns, and it'll tell you what the, how many turns it takes. This is a three-turn one, unless you have a blacksmith, then it's two. Uh, then we'll go ahead and say, let's go ahead and build a boat, too. So we'll go ahead and put this one down here, and we'll take another coin. We'll place it here. And luckily, we spent our food here, so we're good. So we can do all this. Otherwise, we couldn't. And so we got our boat now at three as well. And if we had this here, the lumber mill area, or the whatever it's called, the, uh, the warehouse, if we had that, it would only be a two as opposed to a three. Uh, and so we got those. We can also choose to upgrade a building if we'd like. Maybe we want to get our blacksmith going on. So we'll take this and we'll place it like that. If we had the lumber mill or the, <laughs> the lumber yard or whatever, it would be a three as opposed to a four, but eh, that's the case. That would be how that works. And then the other player would do the exact same thing over here in whatever way they want. Maybe they wanted to have this one instead, or maybe they wanted to build the granary instead. That would be up to them. They could also choose to spend one of these currencies to get one of these Benevolence of the Gods cards, which he'll do, and he can read it. And it'll tell you wh whether or not they get activated or they happen instantly. This one's actually interesting. It says to roll a die. On a one, it's no good. And what's bad? And a six, it's really good. And then if it's anything else, which was that, then this is just going to get discarded. It could have actually given us uh, some favor, which is very important. And it could have also made us have to draw a uh, hatred of the gods or the, the wrath of the god card. Uh, so anyway, this, this would burn. And then after, after everybody's placed all the things they want to place, then you're going to go ahead and turn this to the side. Every single one of them will rotate as long as they have coins and or certain uh, building resources on them. So that would happen just like that. And the next player would do the same thing. And of course, you can actually use these steel and, and wood to build certain things. Steel is going to let you build units and wood will let you build boats. Uh, so you can utilize those without having to pay for the food in this during the seasons but let's say you wanted to do that then you would need to so the next season now is going to be winter but before that happens every player is going to get one gold coin so i'll just give you guys each a gold coin and then you'd progress now do you want to do anything during the winter that's a good question because the long winter is long which means that you need to spend two food in order to build during the season which is kind of useful because it'll let you all your things rotate otherwise you just wait and gain a gold coin and wait till the next uh, the spring area but we're going to go ahead and build just to show you so now we're going to go ahead and place our currency down we could choose here and maybe here and we'll save these two and then that's maybe all we want to do so in this case the winter would be over these would then f turn over to the side we'd spend these and then we'd get one coin for the end of the season then we have one more season left is just spring, which we'd have to spend another food. And remember, food can be food or it can be coins. It's up to you, but food is mainly used for, of course, feeding here. Otherwise, you have to basically pay for your food. Last season, and so let's go ahead and oop, 
and oop, and eh, why not over here as well? We're out of coins though. And this is the last season, everybody else will be doing the same thing, in which case the season would end, these would all be turned, and of course when it's at one, these will be flipped over, and you can put them over here in your tableau. The same can be said for these guys. And remember, two to each longboat, so you can have two there, and then this is going to just rotate to two. And of course we got our one currency left over because at the end of every season you get a coin. All the food and or coins that are in here are gonna go ahead and disappear. And uh, that would pretty much be it uh, for this specific round, in which case <laughs> both players will be doing that. So this player would have a board similar to this or similar uni unique units. And then we're simply gonna go ahead and move on to the next round. And how that works is uh, both players are going to take these, these die up and they're going to, well, this is gonna pass first of all. And then the, one of the event cards is going to get drawn, and you're going to read the event. It's going to have flavor on it, and it'll say something like, pay money for the present or draw one of these nasty wrath cards because Freya has heard your mutterings about the love and traditions. So you could choose kind of what you want to do, and every player will get the option to choose. Afterwards, those will get discarded. Then players will go ahead and roll these die here, and the player who rolled the highest will get to choose first to go ahead and fight these things here. As you see, the ones that get stronger that have a higher damage, damage bonus will also have specific passive abilities that give you better loot, as well as will give you more glory, which will go up on this track. Eventually, and that's basically the idea of the game though, um, uh, there's a couple things that are kind of important here as well. First of all, when you pass this on and you have somebody draw this card, these can affect the player who drew it, or they can affect everybody, or can affect nobody. Additionally, as you upgrade buildings, like if you upgrade this thing here, which is one to get a benevolence, when you upgrade it to this one here after a certain amount of turns, uh, then you're going to be able to spend two for benevolence, or three, or two to give somebody else a wrath card, or you can send seven glory. So if you ever get to this point here on your on a season, you can go and spend seven, and then you can move your tracker up. The other ways to upgrade your tracker are the loot cards. They'll give you certain things. So let's see if I can find one here. Uh, that's going kind to of upgrade a unit. That'll give you some gold. There, if you get one of these, this will upgrade as well. As you upgrade, you're going to basically be doing certain things. So, for instance, in this track here, this would, if both players got to here, you would remove certain cards from here, the, basically the, the weaker ones. When you get to here, you'll have to draw a red card. And then for here, you're going to remove all the secondary cards in here, which means only the scary ones will be left. You cannot win the game if you're here going to here by spending glory, but you can win it in any other way, whether it be a card, whether it be an event or whether it be um, one of these guys over here. And these guys will trigger based on if you get certain things. Like if you get three longboats, you'll get this first. Or if you get a certain amount of coins first, you'll get one of these guys here. And these are basically like victory point conditions as the game goes on. Uh, and like I said before, you, when it's the next round, of course, players can work together to defeat these certain things. But if they do not succeed, their, their Vikings are going to perish. And you want to be careful how you how you utilize your guys because they can die. And do make sure to use this thing here. But that's pretty much the idea of the game. The lesser loot cards will give you less valued uh, rewards, and the greater ones are going to give you a lot more. These generally are going to be very good for you, benevolence, and these red ones can be nothing all the way to very dangerous. These things are a mix, providing you with some story lore as well as choices you'll be able to make during this viking game and then adding all these up are going to give you bonuses blacksmiths will let you upgrade your units to make them stronger the warehouse is going to let you build additional units here like i talked about and the granary is actually really cool too because it will let you only have to spend one food during the long winter as well as there's certain cards that will affect you if you don't have the granary so having this is kind of beneficial and will save you value throughout the game as well as of course in the back of all these cards depending on what buildings you have you might get to start at a certain point like that three as opposed to the four but that is Valhall pretty much the basic idea of the game the first player to get to the end here before anybody else is going to win provided they 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 don't use this glory here but that's pretty much the game so let's come up and we'll discuss it I'll tell you what I think about it and I'll show you some other additional cards and how they function so Valhall, I have a couple caveats first before we get into our review and the first one is you do not win the game when you get your uh your crow all the way to the end of this track minus one but you can trigger the end game when you get your glory to seven which will give one more round and the person who's farthest along on the track is going to win um, additionally this is the first version of the game so if you're watching this video it's very likely that you are watching looking at the kickstarter for the second version which means that you're going to have an, an additional type of content 
for uh, the Yagdrasil board, the Yagdrasil board, in which you're going to be getting these little tokens here, which will be a little bigger, nicer component quality. This here has some uh, components that they wanted to change, upgrade, make a little better. And if you look at the Kickstarter campaign, it will show you the different quality of components based on what I have here. It's going to be a little different for the second version of the game. This is the first print that came out a couple years ago and has a few changes in it that are going to be a lot nicer as far as how it looks, as far as the component quality, etc., etc. So go ahead and take a look at the campaign and see the differences between that. I'm going to mainly be talking about this and what I felt like the game was like and of course the component quality for this, but I do acknowledge that there's definitely going to be some improvements based on this next version of the game on Kickstarter right now. So Valhall, it has some really interesting mechanics and I mean interesting because like once again people always like don't say interesting but it's like has it's 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 unique to me when I see that you're able to build on your tableau, you're building your city up and then you send out your units to another board that has a bunch of different areas you can go to. You'll also be drawing unique event cards. They're gonna do a bunch of different things, some really cool things. And the main thing about this game, I would say, is read the events fully. There is a ton of theme in these games. Tilda, I have your mixed mead in the food of the cattle. Uh, in the food of the cattle, they are behaving strangely again. Strange, strange is not even beginning to describe it. There is more like a they're more like lunatic beasts. Almost all the cattle on the whole island. The seers tell us to kill all of them and not to eat them. Sacrifice them. Hopefully, this will please the gods. And that says you can't provide food to the season with all the consequences. The building granary pr protects you. This card. Uh, from this card. So if you have the granary, it protects you. Like I said before, granaries can help you. Otherwise, you'll be able to get food, etc., etc. All these things do different things during the round, changing the game just a little bit. Benevolence cards are going to help you throughout the game and provide some re really unique benefits. And all of them also have theme on them. Uh, you receive a message from the shipbuilder. Apparently, he felled a tree, which is particularly suitable for shipbuilding. This is certainly a gift of the gods. We should use it quickly, for we know that even blessed trees are not immune to woodworm. You receive two specific pieces of wood, which will help you progress your game as you build different buildings. A lot of cool stuff as far as different components of the cards go. It's always going to be different what you're even drawing. Certain cards, like the loot cards, will be shuffled back in. And of course, the better loot you get, the more likely you're going to get value out of them. Some of them will give you coins and wood. Others are going to give you uh, glory and so on and so forth, up to the point where if you have the really greater loot loots, then you're going to be able to get stuff like the uh, the blessing of the gods. This is the most important thing in the game. It's what you need to win. And I would suggest you try and get those as best, best as possible. As the game progresses, you're going to get those three seasons in which you're going to be able to build stuff. Of course, winter is more expensive, but if you can utilize all three, it's always a good thing because you're going to be progressively getting better and better and building more and more and, of course, improving your army so that you can go out and raid and collect more loot and bring it back. This game has a lot of historical accuracy as to how they functioned and what they tried to do in order to accomplish their goals and create a better civilization for themselves. And, of course, if you do not like the different raiding aspect of how the Vikings functioned, maybe that won't be for you. But overall, the game is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this game and it has some really cool elements, especially the fact that you have two different things you're kind of doing, as well as dealing with your opponents. Being able to give them these red cards after you've built certain areas on your board is really cool as well, and some of them can really mess with your opponents. But it's not really a take that game. And in fact, sometimes with your opponents, you're actually going to work together, especially with more players, to try and destroy the larger, scarier cities that become a little more difficult, a little more... Uh, uh, advanced and hard to function with and you have to say okay let's work together because right now we can't beat anything on our own I'll give you this you give me this and it has this kind of Catan feel as far as the bartering goes in the game and you're gonna see the difference between what you're building what your opponents are building but it always stays very close each time we've played this game with all the different player counts it was always extremely close to winning another thing to note too is the game I guess can get kind of mechanical especially with the building function because you'll have three rounds of building so you're gonna want to do what you want to do and I actually would suggest as long as players aren't giving you these red cards to everybody just kind of do what they need to do during the seasons because most of the time it's not going to affect anybody else so you can kind of progressively choose what you want and build what you want how you want to build it make sure as long as you don't forget the honor system of course then it's going to go a lot faster a lot smoothly uh, back to that part where you're doing the viking fight and that's the basic idea of the game it was so close i really liked the theme and i think for the most part if you enjoy what i'm talking about here you're going to like it as well like i said the only little negatives i have is it can be kind of mechanical but you can speed that process along as well as the fact that sometimes you're not going to get what you need when rolling die because when you roll these red die at the beginning of the game it'll determine which uh, person is going to be able to go first and fight certain territories on the game and if that happens you might get kind of messed over because you're rolling low luckily there are cards to prevent that and things that can change the way in which you're going to be able to roll the dice which is a nice little touch as well preventing a lot of chance from being too important in the game that being said there is chance when you're rolling die you can mitigate it by increasing the amount of 
people you want to send to certain areas, and it kind of feels like your fault when you don't send enough and you could, but it kind of feels like it's not your fault when you only have a certain amount and you just couldn't do it, and that just happens in this game. If you're interested in taking a look at Val Hall, go ahead and check the link down below, or if you're already on the Kickstarter, go ahead and check the page, then let me know what you think about all the upgraded components and quality. For me, this is a really fun game, and for all you Viking lovers out there, definitely, definitely take a look at the game Val Hall. All right, outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the bell notification button and subscribe to us so you can see more of our content for a lot of our Kickstarter and uh, post-production games. And let us know what you think about these games and which ones we should be reviewing next. As well as, did you enjoy Valhalla? Is it something you want to pick up? Let me know down below. I'd be very interested. I'm a huge fan of Vikings, so there might be a little bit of bias there uh, because I just enjoy Viking and Roman-style games. And whenever they come out, I'm always excited, especially when they function historically like I like them too, and this one does that. As well as checking our website, unfilteredgamer.com, tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And don't forget to go ahead and check our live streams every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. PST. That is going on on Facebook, and we do tons of games on there. We do giveaways, we have designers come on. We've been doing it for years, and I'd love to have you guys jump on board with us and have some fun. Most people say they really enjoy it, and we really enjoy having you guys on. All right, guys, thanks for watching so much. And as always, I look forward to to uh, raiding with you next time.